miles aside from my soul. Hey everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right episode. Today is an amazing day. Finally locked down a new property location to expand the farm to. So we're gonna be developing that today and I'll be showing you the whole process that I'm gonna go through. All the different nutrients that I'm gonna use. I'll be gonna be using my teas, oyster cell, azomite, some of the, uh, the best compost I've ever seen in my life, made by a soil maker who's been doing it for over 50 years. And we will be doing this all no-till. Early morning, waiting for the soil delivery. Gonna get about 17 total cubic yards. I've planned out about 14 yards of it will be here, and I'm gonna take three or maybe a little more back to my house to build some more beds over there and have some extra compost over there as well. It's like an auger inside? It's a conveyor belt. Oh, wow. It runs on the hydraulic motors. That's so cool. And then when we do bigger farms, we'll spread it. For them, you know? The soil is incredible. And I talked with the soil maker. He told me he's uh, he used to work with a soil biologist for like 20 years to help him really uh, dial in this soil. And he even he inoculates all of his compost with beneficial microbes and bacteria. It has this special formulated bio tea that he adds and inoculates his compost with. Um, and it's made from wood shavings, rabbit manure, and horse manure. So we're going to be putting in three more beds here taking all their straw, manure, and whatever was left over, and then spread it out to the areas where I'm gonna put the beds. And then I've laid out uh, three 30-inch beds with 10-inch pathways with some flags. And now the next step is we're gonna lay out some cardboard uh, because there is some Bermuda grass under here. Then we'll be putting the fresh compost on top of that and building the garden beds. Okay, so now we're back at the property. So I'm gonna prepare this whole ground, no till. No machines will be used at all. And part of the reason for that is this Bermuda grass. And I'm, the Bermuda grass is something I always talk about because I have it in my yard also. It's a rhizomal grass, so it spreads by roots. So if you grind up all the roots and spread the roots out, it'll come back up again even worse. So the plan right now, what we're gonna do is dig out these bigger clumps of the Bermuda and then hack down the rest. Then we're gonna come back in with a ton of cardboard, which my buddy Rusty once again hooked it up. And these uh, cardboard pieces are from a garage door company. So once we've hacked out the, the roots, it's gonna really take out a lot of the energy systems. The, it will still try to come back. We're gonna be able to get one layer of cardboard, maybe two. And then the Bermuda grass is gonna have a lot harder time coming through all that and we'll stop a majority of it. And whatever else comes through, we'll just take out uh, by hand when and if it comes up. Another reason to not till, they've got a whole sprinkler, old sprinkler system under this thing. And if I ran the tiller, I'd have to rip all that out. So it's a lot more work. And then of course, the main reason to do no-till is to preserve any and all soil biology in here. I'm gonna show you guys the soil test I took of this property and it came out excellent. Actually has quite a good amount of nutrients. So before the cardboard, I made a bunch of fungal dominated tea. We're gonna soak this whole area in tea. Then we'll put a very thin layer of compost out here. And what that thin layer of compost and tea is gonna do is be a soil inoculant for microbes and fungi. And they're gonna start converting this soil. It's gonna add a bunch of nutrients and inoculate the ground so that the microbes and microbiology are doing a lot of the work for me. Then we will come in, put the cardboard on top of that. Then we'll build the garden beds on top of that. So that's what's gonna be happening and that's what you're gonna see. And then the final step, We'll measure out all the flags. There's landscaping flags, and we're gonna be putting them along the edge here to map out the beds. I've already mapped it out on paper and did all the math, but need to put the flags out to make it really easy to see. And then we'll just dump all the soil out here, shape the beds, and then be done until we build the irrigation. So the strategy I'm taking on this Bermuda grass, we've just gone in and dug with some shovels and popped up the whole root ball 
And what we're going to do is take the whole root ball and throw the whole thing away, roots and all. Because if we leave roots behind, those will have energy in them and they'll be able to come back alive and try to regenerate this grass. So we're just going to be tossing it all away. Something else I would like to do, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do it, is to use a flame weeder out here. So once I get up all this grass, come through, take the flame weeder, and then just torch the whole ground, go through the whole thing. I've got a bunch of friends coming to help me very soon, so I don't know if I have the time. I also haven't asked my landlord if I can have a blowtorch out here. I don't want to do that without her permission yet. Now we've uh, pulled up all the Bermuda dirt clods, and now what we're doing, we're spreading out a thin layer of oyster shell and kelp meal just oyster shell from the feed store, um, just some basic kelp meal from Dr. Earth, and there's even I guess some beneficial microbes in there and mycorrhizae as well, so that's pretty cool. Then the last nutrient or inoculant that we're going to add is some fungal dominated worm compost tea that I made, so we'll just be diluting that using some buckets really simply, just dumping it all out onto the ground here. And then next we'll be coming in with the compost and laying down a thin layer of compost, and all this combined is going to just you know, feed the soil microbes, add a ton of nutrients, start converting this soil underneath here while I'm growing in the garden beds that I'll be making out of the compost because the garden beds will be six inches tall, which is plenty of height to grow any, basically any vegetable. The board's all laid out. We got some flags laid out. These are all my amazing friends and my dad helping me do this. Well, thank you guys so much for this awesome help. We got all of the soil spread out finally, all 14 yards. We've got six main beds here and a couple side beds. And they're almost, they're probably over six inches in height. And we even got a bunch of reserve soil back there that I plan to use over the next many months. So that'll help to refresh when I do replantings. And the next step here, we're just gonna lay out this tarp to protect the soil and keep it really moist because I'm not gonna be able to do the irrigation system for another week. So I wanna make sure the soil stays moist and stays alive so it's ready to go for planting. All right, guys, I'm back out here about a month after the footage that you just saw, and I'm finishing up the drip system right now. I'm going to be doing a video all about this entire drip system, the extra sprinkler system I'll be using, as well as the new manifold design that I've done. I've upgraded it, and I'll put a link to my other manifold design, but this is still flow through while being easier to take off, has less parts, and has less labor. So I'm really excited to show you guys the new manifold design. So I hope now with my previous video showing how I used cover crops, tilling in, showing that sort of methodology, and now showing this completely no-till setup, hope it's given you a couple different ways of how you can set up your own property or garden or farm. There's just so many ways that you can do it, and it's all about the context that you're growing for and growing in, the tools that you have, the money that you have. There's so many variables, and there's no one right way to do it but I'm really happy with how this has worked out it has snuffed the Bermuda grass and hopefully in the coming months I'll be able to see if it truly did work